Hello everyone, and this is a video which I will be posting on the page where you can download Draft Helper, the Draft Helper, or whatever it's being called, I'm calling it. Uh, I'm just gonna show, give a little walkthrough of how to use it. And this is just a standalone video, so that it, like, when I do update videos, I don't have to do other stuff. Anyway, so... If you want to go to Draft Helper, you go to, or you want to get the Draft Helper and use it, you go to this site. Right here. I'll link this in the comments. And there will... The page will look like this, except the video you're watching now will be probably somewhere in here. Uh, as you can see, the first step you should probably do if you want to use the Draft Helper is go here. Go to this link, which isn't hyperlinked, because I don't know how to do that. You go here to... Sun Developer Systems to get the Java SE runtime environment, which you might already have, because uh, a lot of programs use it, so you might have been prompted to download it at some point, and you did. Uh, if you don't have it, you should download it, because the how the program runs. Uh, yeah, so you go here, you download it, it's not that hard, you select your platform, uh, Windows, we'll say, you agree, you don't have to sign up, you just continue. Uh... And then you just click this, or click this if you want, doesn't really matter. Install it, and it's done. Not a big deal. So you do that, and then you download the Draft Helper, which is by clicking the little download button down here. Do, 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 do. You can always send me questions up here. And so you'll get a thing. It's a, it's a zip file. Uh, I could... Hmm... I uh, don't have... Most most uh, operating systems can just do uh, zip files already. If you don't know how to get a zip file unzipped, go to win... WinRAR. I hmm, hope no sneaky stuff. Go to WinRAR, go here, and just uh, download the trial version. Click that, install that, if you can't. A lot of, like, most Windows systems just have a built-in on decompressor though, so it's probably not going to matter. So you downloaded it, and you should extract it, which I didn't because I'm silly, but let's just go to our downloads, uh, ignore everything else here. So you find your draft helper in there, and you do do do, and that was not the right one. And you do do do, and you extract them, or however your unzipper does it. And so now you've got a folder that says draft helper, and you can move this wherever you want. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it here. And it's going to say Draft Helper. Well, you can just move that one, too, if you want. But, here you go. This is the Draft Helper. So you click here, and it loads. And as you can see, there is now color. So how would you use this Draft Helper? Well, I'll give you a rundown of that, too. As you can see, it's all color-coded. It's all color-coded, uh, sort of. White is just blank. And then there's blue, black, red, green, colorless. There's no multicolored yet. At some point in the future, if I do a multicolored set, I will add multicolored functionality. Uh, somehow. Uh, if anyone wants to give suggestions for how that should be set up, you should just say so. And how would you use this? Well, a basic rundown of how this works. You just click something in a list, and you either hit enter, or you double click. And it will move it from this list to your pack. There's other stuff going on, but don't focus on that for right now. So white, yeah, you see? And you can move it back from your pack by double clicking it. You can add more than one. You can put them back in whatever order you'd like. You can add a whole bunch. Oops. And if you hit reset, it uh, it just resets all of them. And so, okay, so that's how you work that. Uh, you can change between Rise of Eldrazi, World Wake, and Zendikar currently. Uh, if there's new ones added, they'll be there. Um, yeah. So that's how that works. Alright, so, to give a demonstration of how it works, I will just sort of run through this draft I did. Uh, this is one I did with a friend of mine that I did not record for people that watch my actual recordings. Uh, this is one I was going... I actually recorded it, but I lost the video. Because I deleted it, emptied my recycling bin, and was like, hmm, where'd that video go? Ah, oh, nuts. Anyways, so how would you do this? Well, there's nothing really going on here. Because it's the first pack. And there can't be a common missing. 
And that's just how it works. So there can't be color missing. Uh, but I can give a little demonstration. You'll just see Copper Mirror, Wing Puncture, you know, Invisimancer. I'm not going to explain what's going on quite yet. Rogue Existence, Volshock Heart Soaker, uh, Goblin Gavalier, Golem's Heart. The heck? Is that not a common? Oh, okay, no, 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 right, right, right. Golden Urn is the is the common. Relic Putrescence, I think that's how that's pronounced. That, and you'll see Stoker Bottle, and it says definitely missing Snapsil Rider, but it's lying. Wait a second. All right, no, it's not. Haha, <laughs> because there's a foil in the pack, I believe. Isn't that foil? No, wait, what's going on here? This is awkward. Three. Oh, yeah. There are three uncommons in the pack, which means one of them is foil. Okay, so that, that, that what does this tell you? This tells you the foil missing is Snapsil Rider. I think it's the Golem's Heart. I can't tell in this interface, though. Yeah, because it looks like the border is a little bit more... I don't know. Doesn't really matter. There's a foil in the pack, and it was snap, and it replaced Snap's sail glider. So let's just go on to the. I picked uh, the Razor Hippogriff. Just doesn't really matter. And let's see. Is there an uncommon missing here? Rare, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. So there's a common missing here. So you might be interested. Everyone that drafts, hopefully, knows that if you send cards to your left. And like, say, a bunch of white cards, that's signaling. But how do you read signals from your right? And well, you can look at a pack and be like, well, there's a good white card in this pack. You know, well, it's an uncommon, so, you know, there's probably, he's not white if he didn't take this. But, you know, maybe three picks in if there's a common missing, if there's a common missing, and, like it's, and there's a good common left. What if he took, um... Like a shock? No, that's a bad example. I can't remember what it's called. The Artifact Shock. Galvanic Blast. What if he took a Galvanic Blast over a Turn to Slag? You see the Turn to Slag, and you say, hmm, that's a pretty good red card. Maybe he's not red, but he took a Galvanic Blast. So it would be nice if you could figure out exactly what it was. And so there's a Vault. So how would you do this? Well, you say... What's the first card? You can add them in any order, but let's just see. We've got a Vault Skyward, so you find Vault Skyward. Uh, the easiest way to do it is probably just blue V and then enter or click, depending on how quick you are. And you click Vault Skyward. And you'll notice it tells you some stuff down here. The first thing you notice is that a whole bunch of stuff disappeared. Why did that stuff disappear? Because the program uses its no knowledge of the print run and says, if there's a Vault Skyward in the pack... All these other cards can't be in the pack. So let's just hide them. Because there's no point in leaving them up there for you to potentially choose and have the program tell you you can't pick them. Just make it so you can't pick them. So any cards that can't be in the pack, can't be in your pack, based on the cards you've already added, disappear to make it simpler. And then you'll notice at the bottom here that you've added a card and it tells you, well, here's the possibly missing cards and possibly missing card. Now since it says or... It's either this or this. And so there's either th these cards missing or these cards missing. But that doesn't really help you, right? That doesn't, like, oh, it could be these ten cards missing. So let's ignore that. Let's add more cards. So there's a Black Cleave Goblin. Let's add that. Oh, see, that, that, that hits some more stuff. And it, so it's definitely the stuff here that's missing. So now there's no ore, so we know it's just, there's definitely a snap sail glider missing, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's just add some more cards. Golem Foundry. Golem Foundry. Uh, if, it, if, it, if a card has a number at its end, don't pick it unless there, until there's only one of them. So you'll see if I, like, move those back, there's a Golem Foundry 1 and 2. Don't click on those first. Uh, it's because they appear in two different parts of the print run, which are independent of each other except for Golem Foundry. And so once you figure out which half you're in, then it doesn't matter. Oop, that was not right. Doesn't matter what order I put these in. And so now we know. 
some more stuff, and I'll just keep adding cards. Corpse Cur. Ah, what happened there? So now you notice a whole bunch of cards disappeared there. And that's because there's really four different independent parts of the print run. There's basically four different print runs. That's not really important, but, but only two of them appear in the pack. And so once you've found which two parts of the print run are shown, the program says, oh, well then all those other cards po can't possibly be there, so a whole bunch of stuff will disappear. And if you actually get really good at print run, like knowing the print run, I'm not, personally, uh, then, you, then you will like immediately find the two parts, click on those first, and then it'll just make everything a lot cleaner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anywho. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's how that works. So now, so now, so now it's simplified a bit. And so, what does this dash mean? Well, you can see that there's ores in between these, and there's, well, there could be ores here. Actually, let's just remove cards until there's ores. So now there's ores here, and ores here. What does that mean? Well, that means it's the, possible, the possibilities for your pack or are this, or this, or this. So it's one of these three, and divided by the dash, one of these two. So it has to be one of these three options, or and one of these two options. It's not like two of these and one of these. The dash means, like, and. And hopefully, if, you ha if there's enough cards in the pack, it there'll only be one option and one option. So, we'll just do that. Golem Foundry. Uh, what did I move? Black Cleave Goblin. And then we see Blunt the Assault. Blunt the Assault. Lockstown Wayfair. Carapace Forger. Snapsail Glider. Uh... uh Scrap Diver Serpent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So we've added all the cards to our pack, and we see that there's a Chrome Steed. It says possibly missing Chrome Steed and a Rest. So why does it say possibly missing? Well, that means that since a print run is a sequential sequence of cards, in this case, let's just say it so, and that means that Chrome Steed and Arrest are at the end of a sequence of cards that are still in the pack. So that means it goes Chrome Steed, some cards in our pack, and then Arrest in the print run. And so it can't tell which end it was taken from. And so it's a 50 50 chance. Um, based on this pack, I'd probably. Well, it's actually a pretty bad pack. Would you take a rest over a Razor Hippogriff? I'd, I'd assume it was a rest. So, probably I should have been using my Print Run Helper, but it's the next best card in the pack, I guess, so... Maybe that was a bad pack, because I am going to take the second Razor Hippogriff. But that explains why my draft goes so poorly. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this until we get another one. So, let's just see. Vector Asp. Nork Invisomancer. Uncommon. I'll get to Uncommons at the end. Uh, Kaldatha Rebirth, Copper, Terrible Scout, Strawshopper, more Nurok Replica, Glamour Post, Smolder Beast, Spellbomb. 